Hey guys, what's up? So I want to start a new series. I've seen other people do this, so I'm not trying to pretend I'm breaking new ground here. But what I always find fascinating is how people rank their music, their favorite albums, the favorite albums by their favorite artists, however the ranking are. I've seen people who have done their top 100 favorite albums, and it's usually over the period of a couple installments. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go and try to take on my favorite 100 albums in my collection. So I have to actually have physical copies on vinyl. I'm gonna put that caveat in there. They're all gonna be on vinyl. My favorite 100 albums in my collection. So today I'm gonna start from 100 all the way up to all the way up to 91. And this was not an easy uh, project to take on because you think, oh, 100, uh, that allows you so much leeway. It actually doesn't. Once you start plugging in um, all your favorite albums, you'd be surprised how quickly you reach 100. So this was not an easy assignment by any stretch. But keep in mind, this is my own personal opinion. And I know I always keep saying that, but I have to remind people who get so indignant because their favorite album isn't on my list. So get over it anyway, is what I'm trying to say. If your favorite album's not somewhere on this list, doesn't mean I don't like it. It just means it's not one of my favorite 100. So, Without further ado, number 100 is going to be Elton John, Don't Shoot Me, I'm Only the Piano Player from, I believe it was 1973, early 1973. This was the very, well, not the very first, the first studio album that I ever owned by Elton John. Elton John's Greatest Hits was the first album by Elton John that I ever owned. But this one I love because not only does it have fantastic songs, it's got Daniel, you've got um, Elderberry Wine, Blues for Baby and Me, uh, Midnight Creeper, which is great, um, Crocodile Rock is on here, High Flying Bird. I played this album to death when I was younger and I still have nostalgia for it. I mean, I love the booklet that comes with it, the lyric booklet. There are very, very, very few albums in my collection where you get this kind of packaging for just a standard single record. This isn't a box set. This isn't a double album or a triple album. It's just a single record. And that's what I love about those early Elton John albums is he knew how to give you value for your money. There were extensive lyric booklets. There were posters. Um, he had, you know, interesting gatefolds as well. There was so much to look at. Um, and so this was the whole uh, package for me growing up. I can't, like I said, I can't tell you. My dad had this album, played it around the house. When I got a copy for Christmas one year, it's all I listened to for about six months. So is it Elton John's? Is it a top five Elton John album in most people's opinion? Probably not, but for me, again, it's a nostalgia factor. I grew up listening to this record. I love just about every song on here, um, even kind of the silly ones like I'm Going to Be a Teenage Idol, uh, Texan Love Song, yeah, Teacher I Need You, which is kind of hot for teacher uh, about, you know, 10 years earlier, but very cool album. Number 99, I'm going to go with The Church, Starfish. This has got the song that uh, I think kind of broke them, or at least if people consider them a one-hit wonder, the one hit that they've heard is Under the Milky Way. Uh, this was released, I believe, in 1988. They had a couple albums before this, but I love just the mood of this album. Um, it's very much like if you're an R.E.M. fan, um, or a fan of just kind of like alternative guitar rock from the 80s. Uh, I think you would like this record a lot if you like The Cult. Um, Destination is a great lead off track. Blood Money, Lost. Uh, Reptile was actually the first song I heard off here. I heard it even before Under the Milky Way. And I remember going into a record store and they had these little listening stations. And this was uh, when it came out on CD. They had like the CD, you could put the headphones on and you could listen to it. And I remember hearing Reptile being like, I am getting this. I actually bought it on cassette back in the day and then eventually got it on CD. 
uh, and that's what I was most familiar with. Um, this is a vinyl uh, repress music on vinyl, but this is a fantastic album. It's melodic. It's uh, got very cool uh, kind of moody vocals, uh, great guitar work on here. Um, like I say, it reminds me of the Cult and R.E.M. a bit, but love that record. Number 98, going to go with Coldplay's first album, Parachutes. Again, another album that I just love to death. Yellow is actually my least favorite song on here. I don't know if it's just because it's been overplayed. I've never fallen in love with that song, but there's the other tracks on here are just amazing. Um, you know, Shiver is great, Spies, Sparks. If you're only familiar with Coldplay from the stuff they've done in the last 10 years, which I consider to kind of be radio-friendly garbage, check out their first two albums, maybe three albums. Everything's Not Lost is just this epic kind of piano-based rocker that closes out the album. Um, Trouble is a great track. This was sort of when they were sounding like classic uh, Radiohead a bit, uh, like their first two albums, The Benz and Pablo Honey. If you like those records uh, and you haven't checked out Coldplay's Parachutes yet, do yourself a favor. Great songwriting, great musicianship. Wish they would have, you know, kind of stuck with the formula of this record, uh, but they didn't. And what are you going to do? All right, what are we on? Uh, 97? The Replacements, Let It Be, my second favorite Let It Be album. Um, on here, I Will Dare uh, is a great, great track. If you've heard any song in here, it might be that one or Androgynous. Now, up to this point, The Replacements had been kind of a very punk, a little kind of tongue-in-cheek uh, kind of band, a little agit pop. Uh, but very much in a punk vein. And this was kind of the first album where you started to hear uh, a little break uh, from that aggressive punk formula that they had. They do a cover of Kiss's Black Diamond on here, which is amazing. Tommy Got His Tonsils Out is a, a pretty funny uh, kind of a punk track. Um, Favorite Thing is another punk sounding track. Um, Unsatisfied is great. Um, senior video. This sounds a lot like early Nirvana. Uh, and you can kind of hear that this was probably an influence on Nirvana because Paul Westerberg's vocals at times sound like, or I should say Kurt Cobain's vocals sound like Paul Westerberg's a lot from this album. But it's just kind of a we don't give a shit sort of uh, aesthetic here. If we want to go punk, we're going to go punk. The lyrics don't have to make any sense. On some tracks, there's barely any lyrics at all, or they're repeating the same lyrics over and over. But I think that's part of its charm, is that you've got, they've got one foot still in kind of the hardcore punk uh, arena, and then they're dipping one punk into kind of more alternative new wave. Um, I don't know if I'd go so far as to say power pop, but there are some great melodic rock pop on this record and uh, my favorite replacements album. Okay, number 96, Echo and the Bunnymen. I know I'm doing a lot of new wave, but I like a lot of new wave. Uh, this is my favorite Echo and the Bunnymen album, Ocean Rain. It's got my favorite Echo and the Bunnymen song of all time, The Killing Moon, but it also has Seven Seas on here. Uh, very moody, uh, First Side was Silver, Nocturnal Me, and they incorporated strings, almost like Paul Buckmaster, very non-intrusive kind of a string, but it definitely augmented their sound really well. It added a new dimension, a new texture to kind of their post-punk uh, new wave leanings that they had, but this is a great, great album, um, and the second to last album with their classic Line up before Pete DeFridis uh, would pass away tragically in a motorcycle accident, but great, great album. All right, going a little uh, kind of alternative country here. I'm not really much of a country guy, but I do make an exception for this next artist, Nico Case and her album, Blacklisted. Now, Nico Case was in the New Pornographers uh, before she struck out on her solo career. I believe this is her second solo album. She's still got a country vibe here, but also the elements of the great songwriting 
um, that she would come to be known for. And her amazing vocal. She is one of my all-time favorite female vocalists. And she lets it rip on here. Like Deep Red Bells is fantastic. And just melodic, melodic. That's what I love about it. I don't love too much like twangy country. But this, it, it's got a pop sensibility about its twang. And it rocks in places. And just hooks that will totally suck you in. Uh, not my favorite Nico Case album, but I love the hell out of this one. It is a brilliant, brilliant solo album by her. Um, what are we on? 94, I think we are. 94, Hunky Dory uh, by David Bowie. Uh, I'm not sure this is his... Uh, I know it's the album that followed uh, The Man Who Sold the World, but I think it's like his third so um somebody correct me in the comment section if it's not accurate but my favorite period of david bowie is that early stuff you know from space oddity up until about oh i don't know um kind of like the whole pinups diamond dogs era and not that i'm not a fan of the later david bowie i mean i do like later david bowie but for me this is where the magic is and i love this record changes is on here he just has this confidence about his songwriting and his vocals and changes is an amazing track oh you pretty things the, the first side is so solid life on mars one of my favorite david bowie songs of all time you got kind of a goofy little kooks which you could almost hear davy jones singing a bit um fill your heart is great song for bob dylan queen bitch uh just that great mick ronson guitar work on there um, but it's so eclectic, and David Bowie was just flexing his muscles. This is that period where he could do no wrong. He knew he was kicking ass, uh, and he knew how talented he was, and you can sense it. Um, and this is just a fabulous, fabulous album. Um, 93, kind of will go with the second Buffalo Springfield album. Buffalo Springfield again. And why not? This was the last album to feature any significant contributions from Neil Young. And what significant contributions they were. You got Mr. Soul, uh, which was a, a great lead off track. Um, Expecting to Fly, one of Neil Young's best songs, as well as Broken Arrow is on here. I mean, he left with a bang, uh, absolutely. But you got Stephen Stills, who's pulling his weight. Bluebird. One of my favorite Buffalo Springfield and Stephen Stills songs. Uh, Hung Upside Down is fantastic. Rock and Roll Woman, which the Beach Boys would actually cover on their late 60s tours. Um, Every Day's Child's Claim to Fame. Uh, Buffalo Springfield were almost, I mean, you can almost call them a super group, even though they were not. They only lasted three albums, but these three albums were so golden. And my favorite by far is Buffalo Springfield again. 92, going to go with a little progressive rock. The Yes album, love that moody, uh, subdued cover there. Um, so many songs from here made their way onto the radio. I've seen All Good People, Yours Is No Disgrace. Maybe my favorite Yes track of all time, Starship Trooper is on here. Love that one. Uh, again, this is the first Yes where I think people stood up and took notice. Like, holy crap. This is a band to be reckoned with. They were not messing around. And their next three, four albums were absolutely brilliant. They were uh, iconic albums of progressive rock, if not classic rock. Love the classic Atlantic label. That is my number 92. And also on the Atlantic label, I got my number 91, NXS Kick. This was a soundtrack to my high school year. Uh, you got New Sensation on here. I love Guns in the Sky, which sounded so unique. It was like nothing else NXS had ever done. Almost like a rap rock kind of hybrid. Devil Inside is on here. Need You Tonight, the first single. Kick. Uh, Never Tear Us Apart. This is NXS's masterpiece. Um, not sure it's my favorite NXS album, but damn it, it's my number 91. Yeah, don't tell me the 80s music sucked. All right, so that is my first 10, and I'll be rolling these out periodically as I work my way through the favorite 100 albums in my collection. Hope you're doing great. Let me know in your comments uh, what you think about these records. 
and take care.